Good day too. This is Pastor Joey Pagadora and this is Senior Moments to Remember. Thank you for joining us today. It is a pleasure to have you and we're looking forward to having a great and productive time with you as we worship the Lord together, read this word and pray together. Maybe you have a prayer request. Please do not hesitate. Type them in the comment section below. We would love to agree with you in prayer. Remembering that all of the promises of God are yes and amen through Jesus Christ our Lord. Or maybe you just want to say hi to some of your friends. Please do so. We would love to hear from you. Let's open in prayer. Father, I lift up to you, Tatay and Nanay, and I ask, O oh God, let your hand be upon them. Strengthen them. Let them experience your goodness even at this time that we come together. And thank you, Lord. Thank you that your word strengthens us. Thank you that your spirit strengthens us. Thank you, God, that you strengthen us. And I ask, O oh God, that this time will be a blessed time together in your presence. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let's come to the presence of God and worship Him. Good morning. Come and join me in worshiping our wonderful God. Moments to remember. Moments to remember. The righteous will flourish like a palm tree. They will grow like a cedar of Lebanon. Moments to remember, moments to remember. Planted in the house of the Lord, they will flourish in the cause of our God. They will still bear fruit in old age. They will stay fresh and green to proclaim the Lord is upright. He's my rock and there's no wickedness in him. Moments to remember. Moments to remember The righteous will flourish like a palm tree They will grow like a cedar of Lebanon Moments to remember Moments to remember Planted in the house of the Lord They will flourish in the cause of our God They will still bear fruit in old age They will stay fresh and green to proclaim the Lord is upright, He's my rock, and there's no wickedness in Him. Moments to remember, moments to remember, moments to remember, moments to remember, moments to remember. Light of the world, you step down into darkness. Open my eyes, let me see. Beauty that made this heart adore you. Hope of a light spent with you. So here I am to worship, here I am to bow down, here I am to say that you're my God. You're all together lovely, all together worthy, all together wonderful to me. Light of the world, you step down into darkness. Open my eyes, let me see. Beauty that made this heart adore you. Hope of a life spent with you. So here I am to worship, here I am to bow down, here I am to say that you're my God. You're all together lovely, all together worthy, all together wonderful to me. Here I am to worship. 
Here I am to bow down. Here I am to say that you're my God. You're all together lovely, all together worthy, all together wonderful to me. Here I am, here I am to worship. Here I am to bow down. Here I am to say that you're my God. You're all together lovely, all together worthy, all together wonderful to me. Here I am to worship. Here I am to bow down. Here I am to say that you're my God. You're all together lovely, all together worthy, all together wonderful to me. Amen. Moments to remember. A blessed day to you. This is Pastor Joey, and this is your wow moment, wow meaning words of wisdom. And we know that wisdom is important to you because you have lived it, you have proven it, and you are now enjoying the fruit of wisdom in your life. Our wow moment for today will be coming from Deuteronomy chapter 28, starting in verse 1. And if you faithfully obey the voice of the Lord your God, being careful to do all His commandments that I command you today, the Lord your God will set you high above all the nations of the earth. And all these blessings shall come upon you and overtake you, if you obey the voice of the Lord your God. Blessed shall you be in the city, and blessed shall you be in the field. Blessed shall be the fruit of your womb, and the fruit of your ground, and the fruit of your cattle, the increase of your herds, and the young of your flock. This week, we're focusing on the blessings coming from Deuteronomy chapter 28, the blessings of obedience. And this month, we are having our 30-day challenge. So we'd like to encourage you as you continue in our 30-day challenge, let's not just speed read. Let's not just, you know, read the Bible. Let's understand. Let's seek for the promises of God. Let's put it into heart. And let's seek to read and to understand and to obey the word. Why? Because by obeying the word, it brings success to our lives. It says in Joshua chapter 1, verse 8, in the New Living Translation, study this book of instruction continually. Meditate on it day and night so you will be sure to obey everything written in it. And then what is the result? What will happen if, for example, in this 30-day challenge, you've been reading and reading the New Testament with your apo or aposatuod with your children and you obey the word of God? What's going to happen? Only then will you prosper and succeed in all you do. In spite of what's going on right now, in spite of this pandemic, God still has a way for you to prosper. God still has a way for you to succeed. And that's why we've been having wonderful testimonies from some of our members opening their businesses, having their cars dedicated, having their homes dedicated, many different blessings. Why? Because the Lord brought this success, God brought these blessings to them as they obeyed the word of God. Genesis chapter 39, verse 2 to 3, the Lord was with Joseph and he became a successful man. You see, when you read the word of God, like what you're going to do here in this 30-day challenge, and you obey God, one of the effects is that you stay close to God. You, you, you're never away from God. You, you never drift away from God when you're obeying God because you're following his ways and you're just very close to him. And continuing what we are reading, and he was in the house of his Egyptian master. His master saw that the Lord was with him and that the Lord caused all that he did to succeed in his hands. So having the Lord bless the work of your hands, having God give you success, this is not just something that the who are very close to you will see. Even those who are not believers, even those who, who see you from a distance, they will see you succeed and they will see that it is God who's bringing you this success. And why are you having this success? 
because you were obeying the Lord, because you were living according to His word. Genesis chapter 39, verse 21 to 22. But the Lord was with Joseph and showed him steadfast love and gave him favor in the sight of the keeper of the prison. And the keeper of the prison put Joseph in charge of all the prisoners who were in the prison. Whatever was done there, he was the one who did it. So it didn't matter where Joseph was. Whether he was in a position of influence or whether he was a prisoner, he was obeying God. And because he was obeying God, God was with him. And because God was with him, he had success in whatever he did. This is going to be true with you as well. That no matter what the circumstance, when you obey the Lord, every time you make a decision to follow his ways, success is yours. Prosperity is yours. And why is that? Because God makes it that way. John 15 verse 5, Yes, I am the vine, you are the branches. Those who remain in me and I in them will produce much fruit. For apart from me, you can do nothing. When you obey the Lord and you stay close to Him as a result of obeying the Lord, you become fruitful. Now, one of the things that you notice about trees that are fruitful, you don't force these trees to bear fruit. They just bear fruit. And sometimes you're just overwhelmed with the fruit. I'm sure that for some of you who have gone on to the province, you see mangoes on the ground and they're just rotting. There's just an abundance of mangoes, you know. People cannot keep up with it. And why is it that the case? Because of an abundance, an overflow. You don't have to force a fruitful tree to bear fruit. In the same way, you will not have to force yourself to bear fruit. Once you obey the Lord, you follow the Lord, you just abide by the Lord, one of the results of that is that you will bear fruit. This year is going to be a year of restoration. Pastor Samuel is teaching us about it. We are praying about it. And as you start this year with a 30-day challenge of reading the New Testament and reading the New Testament, filling yourself with the Word of God, let your heart be full of His Word. Let your life be guided by His Word. And see this year change. See this year very different from last year. And why is that? Because you will bear much fruit. You obey the Lord and you will become fruitful. This has been your wow moment and I'll pray for you is that as you continue in wisdom, the days, the weeks, the months, and the years ahead of you will even be more fruitful. God bless you. Exemplars, this is Pastor Paula, and welcome to another Sababa Moment. For today, we will continue our journey back again in Delhi, and we are headed to Mount Precipice. So we're already there, and let's talk more about it. So Mount Precipice, or also known as Mount of Precipitation, or Mount of the Leap of the Lord, or Mount Kedumim, so it has four names is located just outside the southern edge of Nazareth, two kilometers southwest of the modern city center. It is believed by some to be the site of the rejection of Jesus described in Luke chapter 4. According to Catholic tradition, the site where Jesus leaped from the hill, this is the site where um, Jesus leaped from the hill after being chased away, by the people from the synagogue. So if you will read uh, Luke chapter 4, verse 29 to 30, and we're going to read it again later on. Actually, um, when we went to Mount Precipice, when we were in Nazareth Village before heading to Mount Precipice, our tour guide from Brighton, London, who is with us in the Nazareth Village, told us that this place, or Mount Precipice, and this um, tradition that is being held throughout the years by the Catholics is still questioned by many scholars. So if you will look carefully at Luke's account of the cliff, so this cliff should be adjacent to Nazareth. However, this Mount Precipice is located two kilometers in downtown Nazareth. So therefore, it is more likely that the site should be on the northern slopes of the ancient Nazareth where the churches are located today. 
And according to Orthodox Christians, the leap or the cliff was elsewhere, from the eastern peak of Nazareth hills to the peak of Mount Precipice. So our tour guide in Nazareth Village was even saying that the cliff shouldn't be that high. And at the same time, uh, if this is just adjacent to Nazareth, it should be nearby, right? And um, we're still not sure if this is really it. And we will talk more about Mount Precipice in the next episode. But for today, let us go back to that specific passage in Luke chapter 4, verses 16 to 30. And we have read that in the last episode. But uh, let us read it again, starting in uh, verse 18. So it says there, he enrolled the scroll and found the place where it was written, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to proclaim the good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim liberty to the captives and recovering of sight to the blind, to set at liberty those who are oppressed and to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. And he rolled up the scroll and gave it back to the attendant and sat down. And the eyes of all in the synagogue were fixed on him. And he began to say to them, Today, this scripture has been fulfilled in your hearing. And all spoke well of him and marveled at the gracious words that were coming from his mouth. And they said, Is not this Joseph's son? And he said to them, Doubtless you will quote to me this proverb, Physician, heal yourself. What we have heard you did at Capernaum, do here in your hometown as well. And he said, Truly I say to you, no prophet is acceptable in his hometown. But in truth, I tell you, there were many widows in Israel in the days of Elijah, when the heavens were shut up three years and six months, and a great famine came over all the land, and Elijah was sent to none of them, but only to Zarephath in the land of Sidon, to a woman who was a widow. And there were many lepers in Israel in the time of the prophet Elisha, and none of them was cleansed, but only Naaman the Syrian. When they heard these things, all in the synagogue were filled with wrath, and they rose up and drove him out of the town and brought him to the row of the hill on which their town was built so that they could throw him down the cliff. But passing through their midst, Jesus went away. So as I mentioned in the past episode that we are going to focus on this passage to emphasize on the points of Jesus' purpose, his death, his character, his leadership, and strength. So last episode, I mentioned that Jesus boldly declares or proclaims his purpose, his death in life, as the scripture in Isaiah clearly states the reason why he came to this earth. As he preaches the word, his character is bold and strong, straightforward, no sugarcoating, honest, and on point. And people were amazed at the depth of his knowledge and wisdom. But still, critical minds overruled the preaching of the word with people asking, isn't he Joseph the carpenter's son? And they are starting to question, yeah, well, why would we credit somebody's words if he's just a carpenter's son? And, you know, that question carries criticism along. And this led to Jesus telling them the truth about those who are not open to receive the word. So Jesus dealt with a very touchy issue in their lives and that led them, those who are in the synagogue, to uproar. So that uproar led them, you know, wanting to throw Jesus over the cliff because they were confronted with reality that only few chosen people will open up their hearts to the word, to the message of salvation. So what are we going to take from this? In life, you will see people's real hearts when you confront them with the truth and how they react to the truth that you speak of. In the same way, as we teach and preach the word, we should not be afraid to preach boldly. We should not be afraid or hold back in speaking the reality and the wisdom. Yes, there will be some who will never accept the truth or will criticize us, but there will also be others who are willing to open up their hearts and accept 
the message that Jesus wants them to hear. So that is Sababa Seniors. So thank you so much for listening today. Thank you so much for learning another Sababa lesson today. And I hope to see you again next time. This is Pastor Paula. God bless you, seniors. Bye! Moments to remember Psalms 91 He who dwells in the shelter of the Most High will abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say to the Lord, my refuge and my fortress, my God in whom I trust. For he will deliver you from the snare of the fowler and from the deadly pestilence. He will cover you with his fingers and under his wings you will find refuge. His faithfulness is a shield and a buckler. He will not fear the terror of the night, nor the arrows that fly by day, nor the pestilence that stalks in darkness, nor the destructions that waste at noonday. A thousand may fall at your side, ten thousand at your right hand, but it will not come near you. You will only look with your eyes and see the recompense of the wicked, because you have made the Lord your dwelling place the most high, who is my refuge. No evil shall be allowed to befall you, nor plague come near your tent. For he will command the angels concerning you, to guard you in all your ways. On their hands they will burn you up, lest you strike your foot against the stone. You will tread on the lion and the other, the young lion and the serpent. You will trample underfoot. Because he holds fast to me in love, I will deliver him. I will protect him because he knows my name. When he calls to me, I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will rescue him and honor him with long life. I will satisfy him and show him my salvation. Moments to remember. Good morning! Welcome to Golden Hour. I'm Pastora Babes. It's time to sing along with me. Come on, let's sing for Ancient of Days. Every tongue in heaven and earth shall declare your name. 
the next time, God bless. Moments to remember. Hello, I'm Sister Annie. Welcome to your dance along. Time for warm up. Please grab a chair. Verse 4, praise Him with tambourine and dance, praise Him with strings and pipe. Dance is for God's praise. Come, let's worship Him together. today. Stay fit for service. God bless! Moments to remember. Good day! I am Pastor Ratin and welcome once again to our prayer time. Thank you for always sharing with us your prayer request and for allowing us to witness the miracles that God is doing in your life. So how do we pray? Fervently and with joy. Let us all pray. Heavenly Father, we come before you in the mighty name of Jesus, and we are so privileged to experience your miracles in our lives today, O God. Thank you for your goodness. Thank you for your graciousness, O God. Father, right now, we lift up to you Sister Rose and Brother Joe Galang. Father, we are believing and claiming for their dream house in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord, for continuously blessing their business in the market, for providing more clients for them in Jesus' name, that every day, O oh God, they will just experience your miracle, that there will always be an increase in their sales, that 2021, O oh God, will be a better year for them. You will crown their year with your bountiful harvest. We also believe, Lord God, for their complete healing, Lord, from diabetes, from high cholesterol, and from the pain in the bones, O oh God, that they are experiencing right now. Father, we rebuke all those sicknesses and we declare for complete restoration in their health, O oh God. Thank you so much as well that you will provide this family a seed to sow, a generous seed to sow, O oh God, as you promised them, whatever they sow, Lord God. 
they will always reap a hundredfold return in Jesus' name. And also, God, for Sister Reggie Cortez, we are believing, Lord God, for your hand of uncommon favor for their family to be granted, O oh God, one unit in condominium. Thank you so much, O oh God, that you will bring them into a spacious place, that you will allow them to live in a place of safety, in a place of undisturbed rest, O oh God, that their place will not be flooded anymore in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord, that you will give them the desires of their heart and that you will fulfill your promise of a dream home for the Cortez family in Jesus' name. And also, God, we lift up to you, Sister Elena Policarpio. Thank you, God, for restoring her family's health, oh God, in its normal condition, for continuously keeping them safe and protected in the name of Jesus. And Father, I also commit to you the business of her daughter, oh God. Thank you that in the middle of this pandemic and crisis, we know that you are the God that provides, you are the God that prospers, and you will bless their business in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord God, that you will put an end to this pandemic, Lord, that you will put an end to this COVID, that all of us, Lord God, will be able to go back to our normal routine. Thank you, Lord, because we know that you will sustain your people. And also, God, we lift up to you, Sister Dominga Garcia. Thank you, God, for protecting her family from this COVID virus. Thank you, Lord, that you will keep them, Lord God, far from this sickness, that your faithfulness, Lord God, will be their shield and will be their rampart. Thank you also, God, for a stable job for her sons and daughter, oh God, that, Lord, you will prosper them, you will Cause them, O oh God, to be stable in their careers, in their businesses. You will prosper and provide, O oh God, favor in everything that they will set their hands to. And lastly, God, for Sister Carmelita Santos, thank you, Lord, for the wisdom that you will give her, O oh God, in running the business that you have entrusted to her. Thank you that wisdom and knowledge come, come from your lips. Thank you, Lord, that as she lacks wisdom, all she needs to do is ask of you and you will give it generously without finding fault. Thank you, Lord, that as they lift up to you, God, this business, thank you that you will give them direction and guidance, Lord God. Thank you, Jesus, that whatever they ask for in prayer, as they believe, you will provide for it. You will answer it, oh God, because you are good, you are faithful. Lord, we thank you for these prayer needs being answered. Thank you, Lord, for the miracles that you're about to experience, about to witness in the lives of your people. We give you glory, Lord God, that you alone deserve. We worship you. We love you, Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Thank you so much for joining us today. We'll see you again tomorrow for another time of prayer. Moments to remember Thank you so much for joining us today and we're looking forward to having you join us again tomorrow for another episode of Senior Moments to Remember. Before we go, we'd like to remind you, you are loved by God and He's working things out for your good. Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever. And so if He healed people in the past, He heals you today and He will heal you again tomorrow. If Jesus helped people in the past, Jesus will help you today and He will keep helping you until tomorrow. So never grow tired of coming to Jesus. Never grow tired of calling to Him. He will never disappoint you. Before we close in prayer, I'd like to ask if you have any prayer requests, type them in the comment section below. Or if you have a testimony of anything good that the Lord has done in your life or maybe in your families, please share it with us. We would love to rejoice with you. Let's close in prayer. Father, I thank you so much. For Tata and for Nana, and I ask, O oh God, that this day will just be blessed, full of your word, full of your spirit, full of your strength. And I pray, God, that you will let them experience an outpouring fresh from you. Thank you so much, God, for covering them with your love. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. See you tomorrow for another episode of Senior Moments to Remember. God bless you. Moments to remember.